Hello! In today's presentation, we will go over how to register for classes via your My San Diego portal. To begin, go to my.sandiego.edu and log in with your USD username and password. The username will be your USD email address without the at sandiego.edu on the end. Once you have logged into your portal, refer to the Torero Hub. Click the drop down and then select My Academics. From My Academics, click on Register for Classes under My Registration. Note, if you are an incoming first year student, you will not be able to make schedule changes via this method until after you meet with your academic advisor during the orientation period prior to your first semester and have your advisor hold lifted. Once you have clicked register for classes on your My Academics page, you will see a new page like this. Please note that if you have any account holds, they will need to be lifted prior to registering. To check your account holds, click on Prepare for Registration. Select Term and then refer to the Registration Status section. Under the Registration Status section, you will see if you have any holds that prevent registration. Common holds for new students will include Health Center and Advisor holds. If you have any of these holds, you will need to contact the USD Health Center or your academic slash LLC advisor to resolve them prior to registering. Once you have checked your holds, or if you know that you do not have any holds, proceed to register by clicking Register for Classes on the original page that comes up after you click Register for Classes on the My Academics page of the portal. After you have clicked on Register for Classes, you will select the upcoming term that you intend to register for. If you still have existing account holds, you will receive an error message like the example in number three on the screen, which will indicate what holds you still have. If you do not have any holds, after selecting the correct term, you will be presented with the Browse Classes page. You can type in the subject and or the course number to begin the search, and you can also search for multiple subjects at a time. The Browse Classes tool also has the ability to perform advanced searches. Advanced search options enable students to search by attribute, day of the week, time, or open sections only. With the advanced search, you can search by specific day of the week, time, or open sections. This can be very useful when you're trying to find that one last class to fit into your schedule and want to tailor it to your exact preferences. Click search when you have added in all of your preferences and you'll be brought to the course search page with a list of classes within that criteria that you selected. After searching for a class, you will see all the classes come up that are relevant to your search inputs. On the search results page, you can click on the title of the course to view the details and the course restrictions. This is an example of what will appear when you click on the course title. Some important areas to check will be the attributes, restrictions, co-requisites, and prerequisites. Make sure to always check these sections prior to adding the class to make sure that you qualify and that it is fulfilling the requirement that you want it to fulfill. To add a course, click Add in the search results next to the class. The selected course will then appear in your schedule as pending on the bottom right of your page. Once you see the pending course in your summary section, select the conditional add drop button and hit submit. We always recommend getting in the habit of clicking the conditional add drop button, especially if you're doing an add and a drop at the same time. This will prevent the system from dropping a currently enrolled section unless another section is available and can be successfully added in its place. Here is a close up of the summary section and conditional add drop button. You can activate this feature by clicking the checkbox before submitting your changes. It is useful if you are making many schedule changes at once. A conditional add drop will only allow you to make changes permanently if all adds and drops are successful. This function will prevent you from dropping a class you do not want to drop unless you're able to add a class in its place. For example, 
If I only want to drop History of California, if I can get into photography, the conditional add drop button will allow me to retain my place in History of California if my ad is unsuccessful for photography. Please note that this feature is to be used when you are performing an add and drop at the same section. It will prevent the system from dropping you and your currently enrolled section of a class unless the other section is available and can be added successfully. Next, I will talk about waitlists. What is a waitlist? A waitlist is a virtual line that is accessible for a student who would like to wait for a seat to become available for a class when all seats have already been registered for. Though most courses do have waitlists, there are a few courses that do not. In these cases, there will be no waitlist for you to add yourself to. If you are waitlisted in a course, this will not apply to your overall enrolled units. For example, if you enrolled in nine units and waitlisted in one three unit course, your enrollment would be in nine units and not 12. You will not be billed for your waitlisted course and you're able to add yourself to multiple waitlists for the same course. You can get onto the waitlist via the course search. While looking at the list of classes, be aware of the courses that are full with waitlists. This will be visible by the red exclamation point. The blue triangle underneath it indicates that there is a waitlist for that class. On this screen, you will see two examples where the waitlist has five of five spots still open. However, if the waitlist is full, this line will read zero of five waitlist seats remain. The system will not allow you to add a course if you are missing a prerequisite or other requirement. It will show you that there is a time conflict, but this will not prevent you from adding yourself to the waitlist. If you do get off the waitlist later, you will need to drop the course which it conflicts with in order to add the new class. In some cases on the Browse Classes page, you will encounter courses that are technically full, but it shows that there are seats available. In this example, it says two of 19 seats remain, but you will see that one of five waitlist seats remain, which means that four people are on the waitlist and two have been notified to add the course. Please be mindful of this as you are looking for classes to add, as in this case, the class is not open and you would have to add yourself to the waitlist. If you get a spot off the waitlist, you will get an email notification to add the course within 24 hours, so make sure that you are checking your USD email frequently. If you are first on a waitlist and the spot opens up, you will immediately receive an email notification to your USD email address. This email will give you 24 hours from the time received to add the course. Please remember to check your email regularly while you are on a waitlist. There are no exceptions to the 24-hour rule. If you do not add the class within the 24 hours, you will be dropped from the waitlist and will need to re-add yourself to the waitlist. It is important to check your email regularly so that if there is a problem with adding the class, you have enough time to contact us with questions before the 24-hour waitlist notification expires. Thank you so much for watching. For more valuable information about financial aid, billing, and registration, you can visit our website at www.sandiego.edu slash one stop. Have a great rest of your day.